attacked at Pearl Harbor by God. It only took about nine months to convert every single industry into making weapons. You can't tell me that we can't do that within nine months to a year. Convert, you know, convert all these industries into making solar panels, put them on every single house in America, like in Germany. I saw them all over Austria. Germany gets not much sun, but you don't need much sun to generate solar power. Have windmills all over the country. As mentioned, there's enough, there's three times the, there's enough wind west of the Mississippi to supply three times the energy this country currently needs. We need to upgrade the grids. Easy. Where's the FDR that will lead us towards sanity and survival? I see that not happening in this Congress. You're pathetic. I see it not happening with Obama, who's now become a captive and maybe always was, of the corporations. So how do we have a revolution to stimulate that? Well, let me tell you about a revolution that we had in the 80s. When I first came here in 1978, almost every American I spoke to said it's better to be dead than red. I said, what? What? And they said, no, we don't want to be communists. And I said, well, what about the pygmies in Africa? And they said, this is true. They don't want to be communists either. And they would rather have a nuclear war than be communists. And it was a mass psychosis. This country was psychotic. <laughs> anyway, so I thought this is crazy. So I got together physicians for social responsibility and we recruited 23,000 doctors and we had 153 chapters. And I taught them how to go on the media and talk about this and write letters and op-ed pieces. And we literally deluged the media with the medical consequences of nuclear war, which started with a symposium at Harvard, um, where we had wonderful faculty, including many of the old fellows from the Manhattan Project, Vicky Kisiakarski, uh, no, George Kisiakarski, Vicky Weiskopf, Philip, what's his name, Philip? Ableton. No, anyway, I can't remember. Morris. Um, and they talked about their guilt, really, of building nuclear weapons, and a lot of them were dedicated to nuclear power because they thought that would fix things and alleviate their guilt, but they all went to their graves feeling tremendous guilt. And these symposia were interesting because afterwards the media said, well, what, what are doctors talking about nuclear war for? That's political. And we said, no, actually, it's medical. That nuclear war will create the final epidemic of a human race and they started to buy it. The only way to turn this country upside down, as Jefferson said, an informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion. Now you see these kids on their cell phones, tweeting and twittering and walking along, <coughs> emailing each other and stuff. They're not reading papers. They're not, not watching the news. They do not understand the nuclear age which they are inheriting. They are inheriting massive quantities of radioactive waste which will leak in the future, get into the food supply, and over time induce epidemics of cancer, leukemia, and genetic disease, congenital malformations, forevermore. You can imagine our descendants waking up in the morning. The food already radioactive, the breast milk radioactive, the babies being born deformed because they're exposed to radiation in utero, which we heard from Dr. Wojcicki. Um, and getting cancer at the age of six because they're ex exposed very early or in utero. That's the heritage we leave to our descendants. And we can talk to the cows come home about nuclear accidents, which is severe. But the most important issue is this radioactive waste. Piling up all over the world and no one knows where to put it, and we don't know where to put it, and we never will. And I've been debating with the nuclear industry for 42 years, and they say, don't worry, but good scientists will find the answer to radioactive waste. They haven't attended to it. I mean, they're like surgeons, you know. We don't clean up after us, we just let the nurses clean up. We're not interested in the waste we create. We're arrogant. Well, so are they. They're interested in building bombs and designing nuclear parts. It's all very exciting. Mm -hmm. So, I, I say to them, well, that's like me saying to a patient, I'm sorry, but 
you have pancreatic cancer, that's what the CT scan shows, and your prognosis is probably six months, but don't worry, I'm a very good doctor. In 20 years' time, I'll find a cure. But there will never be a cure to the storage of radioactive waste. So we're in a very, very, very serious predicament. And as Tim Rousseau's work shows that we're not the only ones with genes and who get congenital malformations. All plants and animals have genes. And what we're doing with this radioactive waste or when it leaks out from reactors or whatever is producing random compulsory genetic engineering forevermore. So we're, we're facing, uh, I guess, the end of the earth, life on the planet. I said once to Carl Sagan, do you think there's any other life in the universe? He paused for a long time and then he said no. And I said, why not? And he said, because if any species had reached our stage of evolution, they would have destroyed themselves. So here we are with global warming upon us. We've had the hottest days in Australia we've ever had. It's a day of 120 or 124 degrees the other day. I thought I was going to die. We're in the middle of a forest of eucalyptus trees which explode with the heat. The fires jump miles as cinders fall down. There was a fire 35 kilometres from us. The wind was blowing at 100 k an hour towards us. We had our bags packed, our, you know, photographs, passports and everything ready to evacuate. The house was gone. It's terrifying. And so not only did we have bushfires all over Tasmania and houses lost, people killed in New South Wales with these awful heat waves, now we've had floods. Huge floods in Queensland, people dying, being swept away in their cars. This is global warming, and I wrote about it in 1991 in If You Love This Planet, and these predictions were all there at that time, and stupidly I thought everyone will read the book and they'll fix it. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're exporting coal from Australia like there's no tomorrow to China. They can hardly breathe over there. Oh, we're really mad. So, as, as David said, we have to stop burning coal now. This fracking is crazy because, as he pointed out, it gets to about 90% because I'm sure more than 2% leaks from those fracking wells. Coal, oil, oil. Everyone's driving these great big tanks and they drive their little girls to ballet in tanks. I once asked a GM, man, what the hell do you think you're doing? He said, well, we're making money. So the, the true God in this country now is money. Let's be frank, frank. It's not God. No one really believes in God. They just believe in making more money. Or they go to church to solve their consciences or like the synagogue. But it's money. Money doesn't make the world go around. Money's killing the earth. So we can fix global warming. We can stop mining coal, we can stop fracking, and we can stop, you know, we can, as David said, all parking lots in, the, in America should be covered with solar panels and electric cars to plug in, so we've got electric cars. Um, I've just been in California, there are hardly any solar panels on the houses. Every house in America should be solarized, and you can't tell me that uh, Americans are not smart. That's how you got rich in the first place. Yeah, you had some natural resources, but you've got a lot of ingenuity. But now all your jobs have gone to China. You don't buy anything here that's made in America. It's all made in China, so no wonder there are no jobs. But by God, could you get going? You could really show the earth what an energy responsible nation will do and become the energy superpower of the world easily. And it's true that we waste up to 30% of the electricity. What you do, you leave everything on all the time. Sense of entitlement is amazing. If everyone stopped using clothes dryers, you'd save almost the same amount, or a bit less, than nuclear power producers. Clothes dryers made by General Electric that made some nuclear power plants, so you've got to have a clothes dryer to use the electricity that they want to send, and they make nuclear weapons as well. I've never used, I don't use clothes dryers, I hang my clothes in the sun, but there's a law in Atlanta that you can't do that because Mrs. Brown next door might see your brassiers and your underpants. <laughs> and that's kind of rude. How ridiculous. <laughs>
<laughs> and driving by side the, the service in the winter. You know, it's simple, it's so easy. I ask people where their electricity comes from, they haven't a clue. You walk in those doors like that, the global warming doors or the carcinogenic doors. We need to think about the way we live. We don't walk upstairs, we take an es uh, escalator, global warming escalator. So we're killing ourselves to kill ourselves better. So we can fix global warming. And we need to have, we need to educate people through the media. The media is determining the fate of the earth. Similarly, we can close all the reactors down. There's so much data and evidence, we need to get the doctors in particular, in the media again, teaching people the medical consequences of nuclear power. And lastly, America and Russia own 97% of the hydrogen bombs in the world. That's each got about a thousand on hair trigger alert, three minutes decision time by the Chinese are hacking into the early warning system. They get a, a thousand legitimate hackers a day. I don't know how we're still here. Why are they still threatening to blow up the planet? Well, that's, the, that's what we've got to look at, the etiology. What is the cause of these aberrant behaviours? And it's psychological. It's not how many bombs there are. You know, we tend to count money, we count bombs, and we count radioactive waste and everything. Let's look at the psychology that determines, or the pathology that is determining these situations. We can abolish nuclear weapons. Obama needs our help. But Americans have become so passive. Now when I say you spend a trillion dollars on killing, socialised killing, which it is in the Pentagon, socialised killing, and you don't even have a free medical care system? In Australia, it's free. You go to hospital, have a decent operation, and a setting stay for six days, costs nothing. That's called a civilised society. Right? Well, and to teach people what's going on and, and the doctors need to step up to the plate because this, this situation, nuclear war will create the final epidemic of the human race, so will global warming within this century and nuclear power for the rest of time. How the dire the situation is, how we stay up all night with the dire patient. And we don't even think about tiredness until we hit the wall at 2 a.m. and have to have a hamburger and a milkshake. But you don't think about yourself when you're treating patients. So we mustn't think about ourselves or our lives when we're trying to save the planet. The only life in the universe, probably. The responsibility is so huge. And I wouldn't talk like this unless I knew there were answers. Abolish the nuclear weapons, now. Close down all those reactors, now and stop burning fossil fuel now and fill the country up with, with solar and wind and geothermal and conservation and it would make the Americans so proud. They need to be proud of something now. Actually, far beyond my expectations, but I welcome your now your own initiatives to do what you must do individually to save the planet. And I want to also um, honour Alexei Yabakov, who has provided such an enormous.